So what programming language do you want to start with? This is a question I get very often because architectural education does not really incorporate programming, nor does it inform people very well on how to start or what to do. This is changing very slowly, but it is. Nevertheless, it is hard for beginners to make sense of the dozens of programming languages and methods and CAD programs, and it is not clear exactly where to start. Now, when I say where to start, I'm referring to people, again, that want to start programming, start automating different processes in the building industry, from the design phase all the way to the fabrication phase. Now, if you want to start programming and automating, there is a simple hierarchy you can follow. You will have a basic CAD program and you will script or program within that software using their API or SDK, which I will explain in a moment. My personal choice and the choice of a huge number of people interested in this subject is to use Rhinoceros 3D. So almost everything that I program starts with Rhino and that would be my software recommendation. This is what I will use right now to explain the languages you can use, but at the end you will see that other CAD software use basically the same languages in a similar manner. So even if you do not choose to use Rhino, you will hopefully have a better idea on what language you should learn. The first step you can take is a visual programming, also known as flow-based programming. You can see this in most of today's CAD software and Rhino has a free plugin called Grasshopper that enables you to exercise this. In this way you can program and learn the algorithmic structure without actually writing any code. You can set up a couple of parameters in form of nodes, connect them and then change the final geometry by changing those parameters, pushing some sliders. So you can automate a simple operation so that it can simultaneously be executed multiple times. Now if you are using Revit you have a plugin called Dynamo that basically does the same thing. Now the next step after the visual programming in this programming hierarchy is actual code writing, usually known as scripting. You can use scripting in two ways. Uh, you can integrate it in your flow-based programming. You can take a single component in your diagram and expand it or add additional functions. Or you can write separate scripts, a small pieces of code that can be executed to automatically do some actions. Now it is worth mentioning that there is a scripting light sort of, which are macros. They are simply a list of commands that you put together that you want to execute it repeatedly in the same order. But this can hardly be called programming and you can see macros in most of the software you have installed on your computer, including Word or Photoshop. Now back to scripting. Rhino scripting was first done in Visual Basic scripting or VB script language. This is a lightweight version of the Visual Basic language and it is relatively simple. Although this option is still there, the more recommended option is Python scripting. Python is a modern and widely accepted programming language with relatively simple and easy understandable semantics. Learning to program in Python can be very beneficial for you since its popularity made it a scripting language of choice for uh, many other programs, not only in the building industry. Now, if you want to expand your components in Grasshopper, for example, using scripts, you will be able to choose Python, but also C Sharp and VB.net. If you're at this level of programming, scripting, I would suggest to stay with Python, but I will return to my recommendations later and I will explain C Sharp and VB.net in a second. If you want to go to the next step, you have to install an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment, which is software like Visual Studio for Windows or Xcode for Mac. This will enable you to create your own plugins for Rhino or Revit or 3D Studio Max or your own components for Grasshopper. Now here you will have to make a big choice between the .NET framework and C++. If you choose the .NET framework, you will be using something that is called Rhino Common. So what is .NET and what is Rhino Common? .NET is a software framework. It makes coding easier and it makes it easier to combine different languages. Now Rhino takes advantage of this and makes a .NET SDK called Rhino Common that you can use. So what is an SDK? It's a software development kit. It's just a set of software tools, classes and functions that uh, Rhino uh, exposes so you can use them when you write your own plugin. So if you choose to use Rhino Common, you will be able to access it through C Sharp or VB.NET or even Python. And most of what you program will be cross-platform, will theoretically work on Windows and Mac versions of Rhino. Now, before I go back, sum everything up and review the languages and possibilities you have, I am left with my weapon of choice, which is C++. This language will be the fastest from the ones mentioned here. Although there is a ton of dispute and many examples where C Sharp will actually perform faster, Speaking in general terms, if you want speed, C++ is the answer. For me, this is important because I write a lot of iterative optimization algorithms and when you do static analysis and you can save a couple of milliseconds per iteration, after millions of iterations, it really pays off. Now that is the plus side. The 
plus and minus simultaneously is the management of memory. I cannot go deep into this in this video, but simply said, in C++ you have to manage your own memory, the memory you occupy. You have to create it, you have to delete it, etc. In C Sharp or VB.NET, usually you do not have to do that because that is handled by the CLR, the Common Language Runtime Virtual Machine. But this is a huge subject and out of the scope of this video. So just keep in mind that this makes C++ more complicated to handle. But for me personally, this is a plus because I want to have this type of control. I like to see what is under the hood instead of looking at the plastic cover. And an obvious minus is that C++ plugin for Rhino will not be cross-platform. They will usually not work on a Mac and combining your C++ with other languages will not be so easy. So, these are the languages I mentioned so far. VBScript, Python, C Sharp, VB.NET, C++. SketchUp uses Ruby, I think, for scripting, but we will skip that one at the moment. And here are my recommendations. If you're a beginner and want to start real slow, just go with the visual programming. Grasshopper for Rhino, Dynamo for Revit, until you're really comfortable with it. If you already mastered it and want to go to the next level, or want to skip visual programming altogether, go to Python. You can use it for scripting and to create your own components. Python can access Rhino Common, and it is a great, simple yet powerful tool with many free libraries that you can integrate in your project. Python scripting is also used in Revit and in Dynamo, as well as in Vectorworks, I think. If you want to go further and have even more options and flexibility, then I would recommend the .NET framework and C Sharp. It is great to write plugins that are cross-platform. Programming is easier than C++ and the interoperability between languages is great. C Sharp can be used also to write plugins for Revit. There are other advantages like the use of WPF, but I will go into that on some other occasion. If I started to learn programming from scratch right now, that would be my choice. Now, most software have C Sharp and C++ SDK in parallel. Revit also has a C++ SDK as well as 3D Studio Max and other programs. If you really want to learn C++, you will have to face a lot of limitations. And it is the hardest language to learn and implement from all of the ones mentioned above. On the other hand, you will be able to create extremely efficient and fast plugins if speed and iterative algorithms are something you pursue. If you have a specific software in mind, which is not Rhino or Revit, for which you want to develop your own plugins, then you should maybe do some research before deciding on the language. For example, I do a lot of programming for Unreal in C++, and I do not think C Sharp is even an option there. So when I say most software provide .NET and C++ SDK, I mean most and not all, and you should do the research. That was it, the most basic list of languages, and I hope I made it more clear for you, at least in the terms of you deciding where to start. And if you haven't started already, do it. Just do it! Let us shape the future of architecture together. Subscribe and comment below, visit the Patreon page, and if you would like me to elaborate on any of the subjects and notions mentioned in this video, I will be more than happy to. I provided you with some additional information and links below. Now stay free and let's get to work.